here. And of course, we're going to go through normally, you know, our normal stuff just to kind of see what's going on. What I wanted to really bring to everyone's attention was the VIX. Um, we wondered if it was going to find the support here in this area. Um, and it's looking like it's falling, but keep in mind that it's sitting right at the support. Um, so really interesting to see what happens with VIX here. It's not looking like it's going to reverse or anything like that, but we do want to keep it on our radar just to kind of know whether or not it will reverse. You know that we have a strong support here. Um, if it does break this area, this strong support at 1824, then I'm looking for it to go to about 1650. Um, it's just really interesting where it is because it's been ranging for the longest time, but at the same time, it's not making really lower lows. So keeping that in mind, you know, if it it would need to break, I guess, this 1424. For us to see like a real, real green, okay, we're going because the VIX is dying. Okay, and so um, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell all kind of look the same as far as on the month. It's an inside month so far, but we do have a new two-week bar starting. So um, this new two-week bar is kind of giving us uh, some nice, decent plays, actually. Um, so depending on what the, the setup is for that, but on the two week, this is kind of where we at on the week. You can see that the Dow is still holding above its 200 while the Russell is kind of fighting a little bit here, but be, the way it's basing, it's kind of making me think that it's about to break out, um, to the upside, honestly, uh, especially if VIX breaks this support here, I can definitely see almost everything breaking out to the upside. Um, and you'll see that in a little bit with SPY, um, go into that. But just looking at how it's really made higher lows, higher lows, yes. Um, so that it, you know, it kind of looks like we may have found a short term bottom. Or while it's doing its misdirection i can't get that out of my head once jay said like put that on our radar like the misdirection of things is just it's always going to be in my head um so yeah so looking at this on the daily you can see that the russell broke out over the 2000 i mean the 200 so like i was saying if it does break out this is giving us a good bullish sign but only if it holds above this 200 and you can see we have you know some uh gaps to the downside I now see these as um, and even yeah so we'd have to see sorry I tripped over my words a little bit because I was looking at this or area right here um, but yeah so far we've pushed above the 200 so um, I have to look and see what that does the NASDAQ has not yet and the VIX is still below so that's what those look like so our big dogs, um, Microsoft, Apple, and the Qs. So, so far, um, Apple is has taken out last month's low, but this was also last year's low. So it's one thing I kind of wanted to point out was on the year, was that it took that out. And we know that in the strat world, we always keep that in mind because sometimes a TTO can follow a really big move to the other direction because they've now taken out um, those stops. So keep that in mind that it has done that. But we are also keeping in mind that Microsoft was an inside year last year. So a break to the downside could really send things down. But you know the way everything's looking so far, it's not looking like we're going down, um, especially the way these ended with hammers and stuff like that. So here's how we're looking on the quarter. Even though Apple had this shooter on the quarter that we were watching, again, it took it out and came back up, right back up. Um, so, so yeah, so in the month, um, this could possibly outside month if we get past 138.65. And then our target would be the around 150. Um, but just keeping in mind, 140 period has been like a, a strong resistance level 
for Apple. So um, if it can break past that, then it can definitely see 150 and finish that outside month. But other than that, everything else is inside except for Microsoft, which did trigger to the downside, but it didn't it didn't finish before it came back in. Oof, excuse me, y'all. So um, looking at it on the week, it's kind of in a tight area where the queues are. Um, Apple. So y'all see this here, this broad information where it made a new low. Um, because of that and just knowing if we are bullish, I can definitely see it doing something like that. Come and take these folks out up here, provided that um, these EMAs don't act as a resistance for it. So that would coincide with that break over for the 50%. That means it'd have to hold above this eight to continue that and then also break above this 20 to continue to there. So even though you know it triggered the outside month, we're keeping that in mind, just looking at these things on the week. Um, Y'all know I love inside weeks. So we got an inside week here on Microsoft um, with a lower high. So that's something to keep in mind to see if that moves to the upside or downside, but you know, it ended pretty strong, so. Um, and then looking at them on their day in relation to the 200. Oh, hello. So Apple, of course, is still way down there and Microsoft as well. Um, Microsoft has a gap to the downside that could be filled. I really can't unsee these supply zones either, Jay. But um, yeah, is there's a gap to the downside that could be filled. Small gap, but I would definitely target that if we do go to the downside uh, first and foremost. And then upside, we can still target this 200. Same thing with Apple. Yep, so we were already looking at that on the month, so we kind of know. Um, and then with the cues which follow Apple and Microsoft, I'm about to show y'all this right here. I see, I see a head and shoulders and an inverse head and shoulders. Um, and because spy and cues look so similar, I can just go ahead to the bigger chart and just go to it. Which how? Excuse this. Um, this was me drawing, trying to learn Jay's method of drawing. <laughs> Zones and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, looking at SPY, on the week, before we even get to the day, um, I just want to point out that we are at this uh, resistance on the week. So, we definitely want to keep this in mind, you know, it's also sitting at the 200 on the day. So we've talked about this for a long time, right? The last few times that it's hit the 200. So what I really want to point out is the gap in the EMA. So the first time it hit this, this is the 200 EMA. This is the 200 SMA. The first time it hit the EMA, it found some resistance, bust through and hit the 200 before it died, right? The second time it hit this, they were closer together. It hit it, it died. Okay, now again, it's even closer. Believe that, yes, the larger one has crossed below, the 200 SMA has crossed below the 200 EMA, and it closed right there, right there at it. Okay, so a couple things. Um, that resistance may be a little bit weaker now. So we can, if you know, if Apple goes, like I was saying, um, and Microsoft decides to go, this can definitely take off. If so, what I do see here is somewhat of a, an inverse head and shoulders. And a larger one would be this right here. This is your shoulder. That's the head. And then your shoulder would be here. So those are, there are two opportunities here. Now, if this is an inverse head and shoulder and this does play out, that means that 
this right here is the shoulder area. So anywhere from basically about 390 to 410. And hopefully y'all can see it right there if I just draw it like this. This is what a shoulder would look like. So it can bounce through that entire area and make a shoulder and then boom, which is what an inverse head and shoulders would do. Okay, if not, another, I do kind of see a head and shoulders. So remember we were talking about the head and shoulders. This was the shoulder, this was the head, and then this was the shoulder. The shoulder was really valid up until like 397-ish and we're kind of like right there. So the last time I had said that, I had said that up here, it did this and I was like, oh, well this invalidated and then it fell. I'm always ready for that. So even though it's sitting right here, this could still, it would be a crooked inverse, I mean head and shoulders, but it would still be a valid head and shoulders if it dies from here. This is like the do or die moment for me, basically, because we're sitting at the 200. That's the hard resistance. That's the top of the shoulder area. If it dies from here, that would make sense because that means the head and shoulders would go into effect and it can die. And it will, you know, we can probably go right back to this uh, area of 380 that it just couldn't break through. Um, otherwise, it's going to break above these 200. I'm, I'm teaching y'all. Alexa, hang up. Alexa, hang up. Sorry, y'all. They said don't, they don't care. Anyway, um, he made me lose my train of thought. 200, we're at resistance that, oh, that I was looking for it to either die from here for that head and shoulders or to boom from here. Um, if it decides to make a, a shoulder up here for the inverse, then I'm looking for it to take out 410 or to bounce between 410 and 390. So that means that 390 would be your next support. Like here, how it, we bounced through here and 380 was basically our support that we couldn't break. You couldn't break it. Like it flushed through it a couple times, but every time it flushed through it, it got bought back up. If you look for 390 to be kind of the same, so it would need to do that. Iron this area out. If it cannot break below 390, um, then we can look to see it, make the shoulder here, and then we can take off. So also keep in mind that since October right here, we have not, we have only made higher lows since then. So that was one thing that, you know, I, I love being a bear y'all, um, but so I couldn't break 380. And with this being a, a higher low that it couldn't break, it needs to break this to break the current somewhat uptrend that is in. Let me kind of you. Oh, hello. All my all my lines came back. But if, if you draw this kind of like this, you can kind of see that SPY is basically in the uptrend. So I'm going to hide those again. But, you know, it needs to, for it to break this current longer term uptrend, it needs to break this 380. So if it does this head and shoulders and it finally dies, it could definitely find support right there again. Um, but if it, I wouldn't be completely bearish, bearish until it breaks that 380 level. Otherwise, I'm looking for it to possibly try to finally break above this 200 and hold. And we might get uh, a little bull run for a little while. It may even do what it did over here, which was break above, fake us out like we were given some support, break above again before it finally dies. Oh, another option is if, if you know, we have a short term bullish run and then longer term bearish run because, you know, there are some downside targets that I have. I could see this booming up like this. Right. So then this would be this entire area could be the shoulder. It can boom up like a head like that. Come back down. And then make another shoulder. And then die. That, if y'all look at the bottom, that's May of this year. So that could be an option, or it could do something like this. 
come back down, find some support there, and then boom up. And that's April. And that will coincide. We're kind of filling this upside gap right here we have in 421. So also remember, we do have that gap here at 421. So, you know, if we are going to the upside, my first target again, like I said, is this 410, uh, 412, 420. We know 420 is going to be a psychological target um, and then filling this little gap here. And then Jay would say the supply zone up here to take out. So that is SPY. Um, come on. Small caps, IWM. I like to talk about those because, you know, for a while they were doing well. They've been in this direction. It's kind of been ranging for a little while. Oh, who's that? I made the mistake. Okay. Um, it's been ranging for a little while, uh, but if it can break above 189, that is the two down, two up uh, tar uh, trigger on the monthly time frame. Also, I meant to tell y'all, let's go back to Spy real quick. We do have full time frame continuity. We uncoupled last week, um, which is why I've, like I said, I'm short term bullish because, you know, time frame continuity is, is bullish. Basically, it's saying that the bulls are in control. And we know that that can change, but um, like even the month and quarter open, it's right down there, right around that 385. Oh, yeah, I had it right there. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I had it right there. Um, it's just I had, had it hidden. But the month open is at around 385, and we know that that 380 has been a strong a strong support so that's why I said I'm mostly um, bullish because time frame continuity is green um, so yeah same thing with the IWM the the trigger is also a pretty strong resistance here so if this can actually break above this 190 small caps may actually do something for a little bit so 202 would obviously be my next uh, strat target for that these EMAs are really tight so Seeing if it can break out this consolidation area that it's been and go for this next target up here. It's sitting at a hard resistance. Um, so keep that in mind. But it has broken above the 200. It's just can it hold? Because we do have, you know, it did the same thing kind of solid that kind of sideways move consolidation ironing out and then it boom so has not taken them out yet that, that would be my next target honestly and energy we have been watching of course because oh, i'm gonna take these off um because it's just you know it's been doing so great and we thought maybe it would be an inside year for the most part. It is, but at the same time, it's being, it's pretty strong. So it's looking like, you know, it does actually want to still keep going. So keeping it on your radar because, you know, it has had some correction on the month and it may decide it wants to keep going. You see how it's been kind of riding these EMAs. Um, new two-week bar starts uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday. So keep that in mind. That's why you see me looking here at the two week to kind of see if there are any setups um, for, for two week bars. Keep in mind, if you're looking at a two week bar, you need to look for, um, give yourself that time frame. Um, I'm still look, I'm waiting for XLE to come down here, but it, it's, it's not trying to fill those gaps. I like all of, I think of your favorite stocks, except for Oxy have that gap to the downside that has yet to be filled. Um, but there, you know, again, time frame continuity is green. It gets bought up. This almost looks like Spice Chart where it just, it dropped, it based, and now it's rallying. Um, so, inside day for XLE. 
You may want to keep that in the hammer. So I'm going to keep this on your radar for the break up. I don't think it's actionable. No, it wasn't actionable in the week. So volume imbalance right there. Yeah, so I mean, there's an actionable daily signal, but that's about it. So XLF, I just wanted to mention because um, banks just had earnings. Most banks. That was the chair, y'all. That wasn't me. I promise you. Um, most banks just had earnings, but I think that there are still some more next week that have them. Um, Ally. I posted in the chat. I know Ally is one of them. Um, maybe MS. I think it's MS. Morgan Stanley as well. So usually when banks, they usually follow each other. So the fact that they almost all of them did this uh, bullish engulfing day. You can probably look for a continuation on Tuesday for a 3-2 bullish continuation. Um, even on the week or on the two-week, if it has a three, uh, you can look for that 3-2. It's not one here on XLF. But you can look at that for that 3-2 continuation for banks um, to continue with this. And I, I normally, I never recommend 2-2 two -two continuations. Just because I think that that's, you've already really missed the entry. But a 3-2 is a directional reversal trend. If that made sense. So basically, you know, you had your correction here. The bulls, the bears were in control, but bulls stepped back in. So your 3-2 break up is basically the continuation of the bulls being in control. And you can, if it's enough range, which here it is, you know, a break above 36 would give us to 36.52. I mean, that's not a lot, but if you think of the ATR, if you buy 36 calls and get 36.50, that's that's actually enough. It's decent enough. But you would look for this 3.2 continuation to the next target to show that the bulls are still in control. Otherwise, it would probably will be an inside bar to because you know threes are also mega bar, uh, mother bars, so it could be a 3.12 or 3.12, whatever. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point out XLF for bank financials. Um, and yeah, keep that industry on your radar because of earnings. And also keep in mind that we're in earnings season because banks basically kick everything off. So um, keep that in mind when you're charting because, you know, earnings kind of trump everything. So SOXL, we've just kind of been keeping watch of this um, because... I don't know about y'all, but SMH is just a little too expensive for my blood. So I like the XOXL because it's like really cheap contracts. So we've really been watching it kind of right since here. And I think that this is also a good one to, um, if you don't always play contracts, you can like buy stock because I mean, if you had started when I first mentioned it back here, eight, $9, it's awesome. And then if you, you know, get a hundred of them and start selling cover calls and yeah i know that's a little advanced but yeah um this is a good stock for that and it moves with the semiconductors so um yeah we've been just been watching it kind of looking to see where it's at um it's still more upside here semis have been doing great we have an inside day um and we have a cross our eight has crossed over we're still under the 200, but we're back into this chop range that it was in before. So just be a little bit careful there. But um, yeah, it looks like it's finally filled this gap over here and might be moving. And as you can see, we're also got higher lows here. So snow. So snow is interesting because if y'all can see this right here, like snow has been in this downtrend. Oh. Right. So you can see this downtrend that it's kind of been in. Um, but also is a fresh TTO here. So last week I put this on your radar because we had this TTO. And I mean, that was actually a really, really good move from there. Um, 
But what I wanted to point out was that for this entire move, I fibbed it. And so as long as this stays above 140, it should be good if it can break also 148 because that's the downtrend line there. So staying above 140 and then breaking above 148, Snow may actually finally break this downtrend that, that is, it's in right here. Um, just hide those again. Also, it's an inside week. Y'all know how much I love those. So you got the inside week, so you will look for the break above um, that and then also if it can break that 150 then it will break this downtrend so keep snow on your radar y'all like it's it's a decent mover the the contracts are a little expensive but you if you understand the ACR and how things move give it some time and play out of the money and you just want to basically catch the move and it's a really decent player um, so although this three is red still on the two week, you know, like I said, if you gave it time and you gave it a couple of weeks targeting this 162 ish, um, then, then it could do that. Keeping in mind where it is, you know, I really do like snow. So, um, I'm just going to mention FXI. I'm not going to actually do anything on it, but I wanted to mention FXI just because it's similar to Baba. Um, it, the, the charts almost look exactly the same, but I've been talking about China since the last week of last year because of this hammer. And I saw this hammer, it's not winning in force. So just keep F FXI on your watch list. Thank you, Jamal, because it is the ETF for the large cap China stocks. So if China's going to have a good year, um, then FXI is the one to play because so we're looking for these to possibly reverse on the year. I know, did I have PDD up here? Yes, down there. Matter of fact, I'm going to move it up here. Um, PDD actually did trigger on the year. Again, thanks, Jamal. Um, so as long as PDD is above 93.37, it's good on the year. And I mean, we, our target is 212. It's a pretty big target. Um, probably have to go down to some quarters and get, you know, more shorter time frame. I mean, uh, price targets, but we have triggered on the year and I would expect that FXI, Baba, JD, um, who am I forgetting? Baidu. Baidu. I love Baidu. I just don't play Baidu as much. But Baidu, all of them will trigger the yearly to the upside. Okay, so FXI is the ETF for that. Um, but looking at BABA, because I specifically have been yelling BABA a while, um, we're at 117, so we're kind of close to this 125 target. I have been looking for BABA to do some correction, and it struggled a little bit up here, but it's not really, like I was looking for it to correct down to this eight or something, mostly because I wanted to add to my position. <laughs> Um, but it's not necessarily doing that, but don't think that it can't. So what I really want you all to remember is that what I'm looking at with China is long term. So keep it on your list and just find your entry. You know, like it, it, it could, you know how it likes to gap. As you can see, this could two up, two down, come down to the eight. I would look for that or even maybe a gap fill as a point of support for a continuation of the trend. You know, we do have a, a rally here. We might base a little bit here before we continue the trend. So that may be your entry, but keep China on your, your list. Don't let the whole year go by and, and it pulls a, a, a energy move and we not, we missed out on that. So Verizon was another one that I had mentioned in the last year. Those are my, like my two quarter swing plays it was Verizon and Baba. Verizon is still good as long as it's above basically $40. But y'all, this thing moves so slow. <laughs> I've watched Verizon for a long time, but I'm telling y'all, I've played it as something different. But you know when something has an ATR of 86 cents, it's not going to move a lot. And that's fine. And also, this is one of those, to me, safe stocks that you can kind of sit in and just let it do what it's going to do. It's just not an NVIDIA. So you're not going to get a $10 move. You know, you're going to just, you buy it at the money and just sit there and hold it. 
but essentially I'm still looking for Verizon to get to my first target is 45 honestly but then 46 40 and then possibly 52 it'd have to move some more to get to the 52 because you know the ATR and it's taking forever but this is a quarterly time frame so remember this the 52 could take till the end of March technically Verizon could do that by the end of March so um, the honorable mention that I had had for the quarter that had not has not played out was SO um, it did kind of trigger but came back in so y'all know this is like my favorite setup in the strat outside of inside bars is the 50% rule so we will keep that in mind if this continues to come back in 66.76 is the trigger for the 50% rule um, and the target would be 60.96 for SO so um, looking at it on the day it is rejected oh hello oh it's actually in between these two EMAs so kind of have to see what it does here you know it's basing obviously so uh, we did end with a hammer on the day so I mean honestly if it's two up that would be great but it would need to two up and break out of this range otherwise it can pro it's probably going to two down and then you know then it'll, it may finish the outside month and McDonald's does not want to fall people say I think people in the investing world like love their Big Macs or something they just I, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> it doesn't really want to fall off now we did finally get this gap fill here and then you know it, it, it boomed from there I mean that kind of makes sense because this gap feels like a resistance turn support as well um, so it bounced perfectly from there and then now it's kind of holding so um larger looking this is almost like a cup and handle it can definitely keep going from there uh, I think I was looking at this on a two week yeah on a two week you can see we came down and then the bulls stepped in and we ended with the three so it's just like how i was just saying that the bulls are if they're still in control this three two is playable so it would be a three two up and your target would be 280 ish i'm on a two week time frame though so you would need a couple of weeks for that but that would be your target and that's how you would play that and then um, ATVI, we've just kind of been watching just because we know that they're finally in court with Microsoft. And I mean, it's still not really doing a whole lot. It's just kind of sitting here. But I did want to point out that June contracts for the target price for ATVI, the target price is $95. Those contracts are like 20 bucks the last time I looked. Mind you, that was like a week or some change ago. But even if they're $30 now, just come to keep on your radar. We will keep watching it because um, I'm really notorious for not watching stuff or watching things for a while. And then after it doesn't do anything, I just, I don't, I stop watching it. And then it does what I want. BA, I'm talking to you. So anyway, um, then PG. So PG, I am mentioning because again, Jamal put this on our radar because we had the PMG. It it is done a rally and now it's basing. So if you see this did an outside bar, right? But basically the bears took control, but it didn't finish. Usually, if it doesn't finish, it'll finish the next time frame. So looking to see if this finishes, but then also drops. If they could, this is a has a solid support here around 149 ish. If it can break that, it might finally start to come down. Plus, you can see, like, this was kind of like a triple top right there. And even though we ended green, you know, that may have just been some corrective activity to keep going down. Um, yes. I think that PG would be really good. Jay also said that this was, this was good for the downside, too. But y'all remember, he looks on larger time frames. So I was just about to say that this may take some time, but I really do think that this is going to go down. So it may do something like this. So like it won't, it may not hit this 137-ish until March type thing. But you can see right here that it struggled and it looks like it's about ready to turn around. So 
keep PG on your radar because it would be one of those things where it does take the PMG out and we're like, oh, we missed it. All right, so my last one is ZS. Um, Kiki put this on my radar. I like this because um, we hit a supply zone and then now we have a hammer on the week. And it's a 3-2. Um, so, and then the, the, the break above is also the break of this resistance right here. So basically I'm looking to see if ZS can break above 110 and then, uh, my target would be 116. It's in a downtrend though. So like, I think I have, let me see. Yep. I got him. Um, so that break above it will hit this zone right here if it can break out of that and hold above 122 then it may um i don't want to confuse y'all and hold above 122 which is right there this 21 resistance you can kind of see how that lines up then uh 130 would be my next target and then also you can just see that it has been beaten down so it may you know have some corrective activity it also could just drop and then base right here and then still drop because it can still, it still does have downside targets to go. Uh, but the hammer on the week is kind of what caught my attention on that. And the fact that it's been kind of really just beat down. And we took out these folks and these folks. So I'm thinking maybe some corrective activity. We can even do something like a H or a W or just a V that Jamal calls it. <laughs> so, okay. And then last but not least, y'all know I will post these in the study time chat. Here are your, this is your list right here of outside months. Basically, oh, that's what I forgot to mention with PG. It's an outside month. Y'all not love that? So your target is 148.08. Not a whole lot, but um, it is an outside month. So that's a, another thing to think about because, you know, like I was saying, this may take time. If this does a three and then a three, two down to show that the bears are still in control. Of course, that's on a monthly time frame, but that kind of coincides with the time I said it may need to, to come down, you know, so it may be a three two down may even have to wait until next month for it to for that confirmation on a month um but yeah so the rest of these have triggered the outside month and i'll post that in the um the chat 